sponsored by Emerge, who help iOS devs reduce the size of their apps, sometimes by as much as 50% in just the first day. Find out more at EmergeTools.com. WWDC 21 came packed with new features for Swift, SwiftUI, Foundation, and more. But of all the videos I watched, only one made me do a full on double take to actually pause the video, rewind, and replay it to make sure I hadn't misheard what I thought they said. And that video had a new feature, lovely new feature, a lines property on URL. It lets us download data from a remote server passes back to us individual lines, one at a time, as strings, as it's fetched from the server. And it's beautifully simple API. And of course, behind the scenes, yeah, it's built on complex stuff. Things like the new Swift 5.5 async await, or async sequence, or effectful read-only properties. These major heavyweight features combine to make the URL lines property just chef's kiss, simple and beautiful. And it's great for, of course, string-based APIs, just fetching data from a server line by line. But anywhere where that's also used with formatting stuff also works. For example, CSV files, they're also line separated. So I want to walk you through how this works and how you can use it yourself in real applications because it just takes such little code. And I start out with a simple SwiftUI application here. We're going to fetch uh, some quotes from my server and display them in a list using hardly any code at all. First things first, I'll make a new property using at state private var to store the array of quotes we'll have. I'll call this quotes and it's array of string. Then down in our view body, we want to list over those quotes. I can use id of backslash dot self here because the quotes are unique. And for the row content, I'll just use uh, text dot init, a simple text view showing one quote at a time. Now to load our quotes, I'm going to use a new task modifier for iOS 15, uh, Swift UI. And inside there, I'll run some throwing code. So I'll say a do block. Our URL will be a new URL with a string, HTTPS colon slash slash, hws.dev quotes.txt. And I've hand typed that so I know it's safe. I'll happily force unwrap that. And now I want to go ahead and fetch that line by line, load it into my quotes array. To do that, we just say for try await quote in URL dot lines quotes dot append quote like that. And after the do block, I'll have a little catch block where I'll handle any errors that are thrown. Perhaps a line goes wrong. In this case, we're just going to go ahead and stop adding quotes when an error is thrown. So there's no catch block required there at all. And that's literally all our code. I can press Command R now to build and run this project back and see how it looks here in my iPhone 12 Pro Max simulator. Let's find out now. Boom. That's it. It does almost all the work for us. Perhaps you can see what maybe did a double take in the first place. Our surprise to be able to just read lines directly from a URL rather than routing through URL session or similar. Even better, if and when multiple lines come through at once, you know, lots of things come through at once, it'll call quotes append quote repeatedly, of course, once we read each line. But the at state property wrapper is smart enough to only refresh the body once. It won't call it again, again, again. So it'll batch its reloads to avoid creating unnecessary extra work. So that's a simple example, just loading simple one line at a time into our uh, quotes list. But of course, we, there's also CSV format, comma separated values, and that's where you get one set of data per line inside your data source. And we can just grab a line out, split up by commas, then assign each field inside those comma separations areas to values inside a, a Swift struct or class of our choosing. And this is particularly convenient because URL.lines, this thing here, this is built using async sequence, which comes as a whole batch of common methods from sequences like compact map, for example. We can transform elements as they arrive. And so we can transfer a CSV line, a pure text string, into a Swift struct using a custom initializer. And I'll show you how that looks. We could say, for example, there is a struct called user, which is identifiable, like that. And a user has an ID int, 
and a first name string and a last name string and a country string. Now I want to make this thing from a single CSV string coming in. But if that CSV is wrong, I want this to fail. So if there aren't enough fields, for example, or if the ID is invalid, I don't know, any kind of identification checks you want to do at this point, put them all in here. But it's failable. So I'll say it's a failable initializer, init question mark, with some CSV string coming in. I'll then get our fields array by splitting up that string using component separated by comma, because it's a CSV, and then do guard fields dot count is equal to four. And if that fails, that's my only check. If that fails, just bail out and return back nil. So we can't get four fields out, ID, first name, last name, and country. This is invalid user, just, just bail out. We can then say uh, self.id is the int of fields zero. And I'll use nil coalescent to give a, a default value of uh, zero for that. Then we have uh, self.first name is fields one. Self.last name is fields two. And then self, oops, self.country is fields three. Like that. So we've got a lot of um, assignments to our various properties in our user struct. And now we can go ahead and use that inside our content view. So I'll say down here in our, our struct here, we have a new uh, property called users, which is now an array of user. We can loop over those users directly without using ID of self because we have an identifiable now. I'll pass in a value to the uh, closure here. I'll do user in and then say for a single user, I want a VSAC with alignment of leading, oops, dot leading even, there we go, using text. And I'll say uh, user dot first name and then user dot last name. It's gonna go in there in a font of headline and then text user dot country. So it's showing out all our information for our users inside a simple text thing here. Now, uh, today's is user parens, my mistake. User has uh, no country, are you sure? It's thinking, yeah, awesome, okay. So now, uh, rather than loading our quotes txt file down here, we want to load a CSV file. So I've got users.csv here, and we can go ahead and read for try away user in here. What do we do? Now, I don't have to convert each one from a string as we go. We can do it automatically through URL lines. We can actually say, get the URL, get user data, and make that equal to be url.lines.compactmap, and then pass in some function to transform stuff. In our case, it's user.init. Now remember, uh, compact map expects to be given a function that takes one item from the array, a string, and returns an optional result of that, optional transformation, which is our initializer. That's our initializer here in it with a CSV. Give me one string, maybe get back a user, and it'll unwrap them and discard any nils. And now down here, we don't want to use URL lines anymore. We want to use UR, uh, user data, which you can see is itself an async sequence. Now an async compact map sequence, which is really awesome because we can now say uh, users uh, here users dot append user and then stop adding users when an error is thrown just you know there's no actual work there still let's build that back and see how that looks I don't think here we go let's run that back hopefully boom loads of users being loaded now the real power of compact map here this uh, line 42 is that it returns a new async sequence an async compact map sequence that applies our transformation, take a line, convert to a user, as the lines arrive. It doesn't download them all and then transform them all in one lump. It'll do it automatic, automatically, sorry, <clears throat> automatically even, uh, as each line comes in. So we're gonna loop over that sequence here asynchronously using await and uh, do it one by one, which is really, really nice. Now, one of the most powerful features of uh, URL lines is it's underlying uh, async sequence, the thing it's working with behind the scenes, it's gonna keep the remote connection open for as long as it needs. It'll keep it open so un until all data arrives. It'll keep on streaming things again and again and again. So your server can deliver initial results, like here you go, here's the first 100 users or whatever you've got available to you. But 
it'll deliver more and more and more as they become available. So you can keep the socket open for a 10 seconds, 30 seconds, a minute is down to you, streaming in more data as needed uh, until they're eventually the request is complete. Now, you gotta be careful here because a bit of a gotcha, when you're using URL lines here, um, the system implements a 16 kilobyte buffer for this. And so this means that it'll batch up results into 16 kilobytes at a time. So you send like, you know, hello world, a few bytes of text, for example, it won't send that back as a line. It'll batch it up until more text comes in, it'll buffer it overflows, in which case it will pass it on and start the loop and then refill the buffer again and call it again and again. So batch it together. Um, and this, of, of course, is performance. You know, you don't want to call uh, necessarily once for every single line because you might have a million lines coming in. So it'd be very, very inefficient. So it'll batch them up. So be careful with that. And so to try this out in a meaningful way, I wrote a simple server-side script that will send out information lines coming through uh, with a one second gap between them. So it'll stream it out, wait, stream some more, wait, and so forth. And it pads it out to at least 16 kilobytes. So it's going to display enough information here. And again, we can try it out with a simple Swift UI app. We could say, uh, I'll have my property here it is, we'll use just lines. That is an array of string. And my state will be private var uh, status equals fetching, like that. Now inside our body this time, I'm gonna just have a vstack directly. And the first one will be a text saying, what's the count of our lines array? How many lines we fetched so far? And below that, we'll say status is, string interpolation, status. What's our current fetch status? Then in our task below, our URL now is going to be a slightly different server just for uh, hacking around with, HWS.1 slash slow dash fetch. It's where I put my sort of test script, basically. And um, with that in place, we can say for try await uh, line in URL.lines, lines.append line and when that loop finally finishes when the url connection is closed the request is finished we've got all our lines our status will be set to done and now for the first time we can catch it meaningfully we can say status equals error thrown so if anything goes wrong just say error thrown and bail out let's find out i'll give that a run now and see how this looks we should see one at a time counting up let's find out so counts one, yeah, two, three, up with it goes. I think there's 10 or 11 items, I forget how many it is. It'll hit a count limit, hopefully say, done. Boom, there you go. So it, it's all being done with hardly any code at all here. And even better, as you can see this a, a wait keyword here, this marks a potential suspension point. This will not block the UI thread as it runs. It'll all happen in the background for us automatically. And there's more. This is just a surface here. You know, we're, we're using URL.lines, which is really just a helpful convenience wrapper around the data arriving in our code asynchronously. And if you want, you can read that data immediately. Uh, just give me the raw data as it comes in. There's actually a URL here, uh, resource bytes property. Just give me the whole thing, every single byte delivered to you individually, a bit like a, a network hose pipe spraying the bytes just freely all over your code until they stop coming. So we say something like um, four try away, uh, wait, sorry, byte in your resource bytes. I'll do let string equals a Unicode scalar of that byte, because it's just pure bytes coming in now, convert it to a, a Unicode uh, character here, and then print out string. And now, you know, it's not gonna modify our array at all anymore, but it will read every byte coming in as it's delivered from the server live for us to process however you want to. So I press Command R now, and we're gonna get a lot of stuff because it's, it's padded out to 16 kilobytes each time. Should see, hopefully, Badoom, all this stuff uh, is gonna fill up here. Now it's blank right now. If I, if I kill the program, you'll see quite how long it is. A lot of text being printed out here. Um, so you'll see, uh, here's a line of data uh, carefully padded to ensure we fill a 16 kilobyte buffer dot and then lots and lots and lots of white space to fill a 16 kilobyte buffer. Um, just test slow fetching works very nicely in your code. So it's literally, it's, it's like the, the raw uh, dump of stuff just flying out for you to process in real time however you want to. No more strings of lines, just give me everything, go. 
So that's if you want extra speed. But you can also go the other direction because of course, uh, in Swift 5.5 and uh, IO 15, there's a lovely new data from API that downloads everything in one lump and delivers across to us. So here, rather than sort of streaming the lines individually, we could have said something like, uh, there's our URL, that's not gonna change. I could say, uh, let data uh, underscore equals try await URL session dot shared dot data from that URL. And it'll download it all into the data property for us to work with. In our case, we know it's a string. So we can say, uh, let string equals string decoding uh, that data as utf self, And then uh, it's an array of lines, if you remember. So I'll do lines equals string dot component separated by line break. Boom. Uh, now, if you run that back in your own code, of course, please remember, that's going to wait for all the data to come back. So it's the opposite of resource bytes. It'll wait for the whole 10 second to deliver to read a finish before um, putting it through onto the screen. So it takes a bit longer. So just watch out for that. Anyway, <laughs> that was a, a, a quick post, a quick update really to express my uh, appreciation for this new API. URL lines is just beautiful. It's a small change in the grand scheme of things, but I just love its simplicity. I really look forward to seeing how it's used in real projects once iOS 15 ships.